guy. Uh, but, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm modeling it up here. But... Should we move on to the next one? Uh, yeah, go on. Um, so his truth, truthfulness and his trustworthiness. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, of course the people of Mecca knew that he was a truth, truthful person, as a trustworthy mm. person. It's very famous, everyone knows that the Prophet ﷺ, his name even before Islam was As-Sadiq Al-Ameen. Mm. Uh, the truthful, the trustworthy one. Yeah, yeah. This was his name before Islam came anyway, so what about what he, what after he became, became a prophet as well? To give a few examples about his tr trustworthiness and his truthfulness, number one is very famous, also very famous, was known that the Prophet ﷺ was the one who used to take the aman of people. Yeah. So he would take uh, the people's money, uh, not take them, they would entrust sorry, yeah, uh, yeah. their money with him to look after if they went away somewhere, or if they went to battle, whatever. So the Prophet ﷺ, even when they were against him, they would still give their money to him to look after. Entrusted the the point is that yeah, he was yeah. entrusted with basically with the wealth of people, yeah. even when they didn't like him. Yeah, yeah. But they couldn't detract from the fact that he was a trust a very yeah, trustworthy yeah, person. Allah. Another one is that the Prophet ﷺ, and this is one it is it might sound a bit contrived mm. actually this this point that I'm going to bring, but actually it, again it points back to the trustworthiness and truthfulness of the Prophet mm. ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, when he went to Medina, he drew up obviously a treaty with mm. the Jews, and the, and the, obviously at that time there were still pagans in Medina mm. as well. Um, and they obviously they later they would become the Munafiqeen. Uh, when he went to Medina, he drew up a treaty with the Jews, mm. and part of that treaty was that the Jews and the Muslims would be together as one Ummah against any external enemies. That was mm. part of the treaty that they had. Yeah. So yeah, there was a treaty, and what happened was that Benu, the Banu Quraidha, which were one of the tribes of the, the Jewish tribes, uh, and they used to have all the gold the gold sulks used to be in the area of Banu Quraidha, which was outside of Medina. It wasn't actually inside the center of Medina. So one of the Ansari women, she went mm. to Benu, uh, the, the tribe of Banu Quraidha uh, and she basically wanted to buy some gold from the souk. Mm. And uh, the narration says that one of the Jews who was selling the gold to her, Bada Yughaziluha, she, he began to flirt with her mm. and basically encouraging her to expose parts of her body. Mm. Uh, the Ansari woman, she refused. And this, the shopkeeper, he made a gesture to someone else mm. to basically pin her clothes to yeah, something. Yeah. And when she moved, her clothes came off and she became naked. When that happened, there was an, a Muslim who was around in the souk of, mm. the, of the Jews. And he killed the person who took the, uh, took the, the woman's clothes mm. off. Then a group of Jews surrounded that companion and they killed him. Yeah. As soon as that happened, the news got back to the Prophet He sent a message to Ben Qurayda that this treaty that we have with you is, is no longer valid anymore. Yeah, yeah. So he told them. Uh, before taking any action against yeah. them that there's no treaty between us yeah, anymore yeah, so he was never treacherous in that sense mm. this is again it points to his truthfulness and his mm. trustworthiness we're not allowed to be treacherous yeah, in islam yeah. if we say we're going to do something even if it's against somebody who's been unjust to us we're not allowed to do something against them if we have a treaty with them yeah so he told them yeah. there is no treaty anymore so don't expect security anymore yeah, after yeah. that after that event happened yeah. Again, it just points back yeah. to the fact that he was truthful in what he did and he, he wasn't treacherous, basically. With his truthfulness and trustworthiness, mm. last, another thing as well is the fact that the Prophet ﷺ, his message stayed consistent mm. throughout the whole time. He never changed his message. Yeah, subhanAllah. Uh, and this actually is very difficult to explain from the um, point of view if you're, if you're trying to disprove Islam. The reason being is that from their point of view, the Prophet ﷺ was a social reformer. He wanted basically social reform. He wanted to make unity with the Arabs. He wanted to mm. unify them. Um, you know, he was just a, a politician kind of yeah, uh, figure. Yeah. If that's the case, he would have compromised. Yeah, he would have compromised. He would have compromised and come to an agreement with mm. the Quraysh about certain things which mm. they wanted in term uh, theologically. Because they, remember, they did say to him, like, uh, d um, you know, you will worship Allah one day and yeah, we'll worship yeah. our gods one day. So if he, w if that truly was mm. the case, he would have done that. Yes, yeah, fine. The Prophet ﷺ, the fact that he was ex uh, persecuted in Mecca mm. for 13 years yeah. before he moved. But his message was the same throughout. Mm. He never called to anything else. He never gave up the message. Yeah, yeah. Even when he was kicked out of Mecca, all of these things point to the fact that he was a, tr a truthful person. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. Yeah. And he actually, uh, he makes that even more firm when, you know, that incident where they say, the Quraysh said, you will worship your God one year and you worship our God one year. When Surah Al-Kafirun came, the Prophet says, mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro? No, but basically he, he mentions twice, he mentions mm. twice in that surah that I won't uh, I won't worship what you guys worship and mm. you won't worship what I worship. So obviously it's the, the eyes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but 
this was his stance basically mm. that there's no way that I'm gonna worship or serve what you worship. yeah 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 so Absolutely. yeah, yeah. Subhanallah, yeah. So the, if it so, was so, truly like a like a political thing yeah he would have compromised yeah and he was offered he was offered like women he was offered wealth he was offered all sorts of things but he he, he rejected it mm. and he stayed firm so it goes to show like as muslims as you, you know you always say that a lot of people like muslims nowadays we have uh, an inferiority complex, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. This it, is like my theory that I'm always telling. This is like my theory. It is, it, it is true, but I just uh, I, I I tease him about it. But it's very true, Subhanallah, because we don't actually praise Allah the way He should be praised, and we don't look at Islam the way it should be uh, venerated. Islam is, Subhanallah, holistically is is such a beautiful religion, and it's very simple, and basically compromises of everything in life. Point is, yeah, that. Islam, the way the way it should be venerated, uh, and the, if it's understood properly, we, there won't be that inferiority complex, and we won't have to compromise. But we don't actually know how great Islam actually is, and uh, we don't actually know the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala properly and the Messenger properly. Mm. But the Messenger himself, he then compromised because he knew what mm. Islam was. When you know what Islam is, there's no way that you sacrifice anything for it. And yeah, you never, uh, sorry, not sacrifice, but you won't compromise anything. My sister's calling me. Yeah. <laughs>